I gotta say, um, I hope I hope Rich makes it out of this. I think a lot, I think a lot of people care about Rich that know him in real life, even though he probably thinks they don't. And I know he's definitely going through some shit. He's been going through some shit with his daughter for a long time. We've kind of watched it all play out. So I just hope he I hope he can make a recovery and you know not do anything too rash, too crazy. So I'll put that out there right now. I know a lot of you don't like Rich. I know a lot of you have either positive and or negative parasocial relationships with whichever creator you like to dislike. And a lot of the times it's me. I get it, baby. I had people flipping me off at NASCAR races in the stands. I was driving at Bristol. If I could giving her all the beans and I'd look up and there'd be people flipping me off. I'm like, what the fuck? What I do? Just a quick rundown of what's going on with old Review Tech and then what led up to him deleting his entire channel with over a million subs, which I was, cr I couldn't believe that he hit a million subs like a couple years ago. And then he just deletes that? Shit. You best believe my happy ass ain't deleting nothing, right? You ain't taking, you will have to pry the plaque away from my cold, dead hands. That's for damn sure. You know how hard it is to do this? I mean, it's not, but you get what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. YouTube as Review Tech USA is a creator who really doesn't review technology. Nowadays, you can catch him exclusively on his second channel, where he streams without a shirt on, high on weed, and discussing riveting topics such as Dark Side Phil, a gaming creator who has been the center of a lot of controversy over the years. When Rich isn't doing the things I previously mentioned, he's making hip hop beats and getting into rap beef with established musicians in the industry. Or maybe he's making ASMR content of 1990 Christmas wish books. This is Rich of Review Tech USA, and you're probably wondering now why I'm whispering. In today's video, we'll briefly go over some of his- Yeah, see, Rich was a little bit weirder than I thought. <laughs> already, already. I, I wasn't able to watch all this shit, all right? Come on. History. Talk about some things he's been involved in, and then cover some of the recent controversy that's been going on. Rich is an old school content creator. Prior to YouTube, he was involved with Blip TV, blogging on That Guy with the Glasses, the old website for Doug Walker's Nostalgia Critics show, alongside its associated programming. So you can see that uh, Rich has been involved in content creation for a long time, which also may, it may lead to the reason for this meltdown. Dude, like, it's not hard. YouTube's not hard. I'm not going to lie to you, okay? Now, I know a lot of people out there that, Go like Tim Pool and all the, you know, Jeremy. They they do a lot of shit. I mean, maybe it's not super hard to get in front of the camera, but there's like videos galore, dude. You know, and that's time and money. All right, I've done it. I've done. I used to do four videos a day for like a month. I could not do it. I was ready to end it all, bro. And Rich has been doing this for years, absolute years, which is why. Okay, which is why I think it pro probably attributed to his meltdown. Because after a while, especially if you're like susceptible to hate, you know, every stream, somebody in my chat's calling me fat or something, even though I'm jacked, bitches. Also, people always call me gay, which is strange because I love vaginas, I love women's. Okay. Doesn't bother me at all when I read people saying I'm a shadow of my former self and I deserve nothing. It doesn't bother me when you say these things. But apparently it bothered Rich a lot. So this is the issue, okay? If you are on this game for a long time, you be scrolling your comments. And somebody's like, hey, man, you look like a giant newborn. And that affects you negatively, you're fucked. Let's be honest, you fucked. All right. Although Rich's time there was not well documented. The oldest videos currently on his YouTube channel date back to 2009, in which he discussed and showcased his video game consoles, both old and at the time new school, which is clearly where his username comes from. Although as we continue, Rich doesn't really know what he's talking about when it comes to tech, nor does he really even review it in the first place. Despite posting frequently for years, it wasn't his full-time job, from what I can gather. From 2008 to 2013, Rich struggled with jobs, with him blaming the economic recession. Although in 2013, he finally started doing YouTube full-time, due to receiving enough success on his channel. Review Tech found his niche, which was not actually reviewing tech, 
but rather discussing controversies and news within and adjacent to the gaming industry, frequently centering around crimes and sexual allegations that were tied to gaming. Or he would talk about odd stories related to gaming. Even a decade later, these types of videos from the early to mid 2010s are still his most viewed. His most successful being father forces kid to destroy Xbox. See, this is the thing, man. Like he, you hit it big with the algorithm with stuff like this. You're good to go. Tincha fan says, is his channel really kill? Or do he, does he have a set amount of time to restore it? Let's look. Now, granted, I will say YouTube can do anything they want. Uh, YouTube has... Now, granted, YouTube don't give a shit unless you're like Moist Critical or Mr. Beast. Let's put that out there, okay? But, but YouTube technically can do anything. They can go and restore any channel they want that's like 20 years old. doesn't matter, right? But you have to get them to actually do it, which would never happen. All right. So um, if he actually can't, no, he's fucked. But um, according to Google, unfortunately, once you delete a channel, you cannot recover it. It's not possible to recover a personal YouTube channel once it's deleted, unless it is a brand account directly tied with Google. After bad grades, the video opens up with this iconic intro. Skip it up, but up. I, I can't. I can't do it. Him talking for thirty seconds, giving context to the viral clip he's about to show, playing the clip in its entirety with no editing or added commentary whatsoever in between. And then after the clip, he talks about it for a few minutes, and that's the video. Now, Rich isn't solely a content thief, if you can even call this content theft in the first place. People who are just content thieves don't stick around long because they themselves aren't the content. The content they steal is the content, and stealing can only get you so far. He became and stayed popular because he was consistent with posting his videos. He was always at the forefront of reporting clickbaity gaming news. And he's not a bad personality. He speaks well, and I can see why people liked him and still like him, and why other gaming content creators watched him before making it big themselves, such as Scott the Was. Scott, I've been watching your stuff for a while, and well, thank you. Awesome. I've, been, I've been watching your stuff. I gotta put this out there. He had a pretty solid uh, podcast channel, and then he he didn't do anything with it, or not a channel, but he did podcasts. He did one with me. I think I was his first episode, and then Scott the Was was his second, maybe, and then he just didn't do anymore. And I'm like, this could have been a good idea, uh, but it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. I don't know nothing about shit. Even within these older videos, we can see a glimpse of what was to become of Rich nowadays. In January 2015, he made a video covering someone who calls themselves Pristine Western Chandler Sonichu. Rich's video discussed a clip of Chandler assaulting a GameStop employee. If you aren't aware, Chandler is an infamous figure online, most well known for creating the surreal fan fiction comic book series, Sonichu. In the video, Rich seems surprised and excited that he gets to discuss Chandler's antics, as it seems Rich has been following the drama involving Chandler for quite some time. Opening the video by playing some famous clips that um, real quick, I worked at GameStop for 11 years, and when Chris Chan uh, pepper sprayed that dude, it was all we had emails from corporate talking about what we're going to do to prevent things like that from happening. Chris Chan affected all of us, baby. This is way before I did YouTube. Then discussing the recent controversy. While Rich now almost exclusively focuses on low-cal content, that being content that documents or makes fun of public figures that the audience considers foolish, Rich claimed in 2020 while talking to Scott the Waz that he almost became the next Wings of Redemption, but corrected his path. I was on the on the verge of being the next Wings of Redemption, which would have been my own fault. I don't know if you know who he is. You're like, uh, well, I've I've watched I've watched a fair amount of the uh, the down the down the rabbit hole videos. Also, oh, you do know, yes. Yeah. I was um, going down the same route, and that's what that's what social media could do to you, man. Because if you get caught up in that, it could it could destroy you. And I it almost destroyed my YouTube channel. I think right here, Rich is outlining exactly what happened. Right, he said he almost became the new wings. Social media will ruin your life, and I think he didn't get away from it like he thought. So Wings is an old school Call of Duty creator who has attracted a lot of criticism over the years. While Rich's channel definitely peaked five to ten years ago, in 2023, Rich was pretty successful hopping on the anti DK Oldies bandwagon. DK Oldies is a pretty popular business and brand with a store in Pennsylvania that sells retro video games. They have a large social media presence within the gaming community, utilizing short form TikTok like content featuring what they sell to go viral. However, they've received a lot of negative attention as people feel they mark up their prices. According to a Game Rant article, they'll mark up products over double the market price. DK Oldies seemingly thrives off of people interested in retro gaming but aren't the most knowledgeable on what's a good deal. If you ever go to these retro game stores in person, they will always sell above market value. They have to do it to stay in business because they'll buy products usually at the market value. So in order to make a profit, they need to sell it above. I don't see the big issue with that because I feel you're mostly paying for the experience of visiting one of these stores in person. However, do not buy a PlayStation 2 from them for $200 online or- I'm gonna go ahead and disagree with that. Ain't no reason to go in no damn store.
Very good. Forever. Rich made dozens of these videos as they received hundreds of thousands, even millions of views of video, with him buying from them multiple times, alleging they were scammers, showcasing and discussing the products coming in dirty and broken, contesting their refurbished claim that they have on their website. Rich likely made a lot of money off these videos, not just off AdSense, but also the big sponsors he was able to get. And another way I know this is he bought from them multiple times, paying the huge overpriced uh, markups that they do. Although as the DK Oldies criticism trend became yesterday's news, Rich's views dropped back to around 20k, 70k a video, which is still really good, but nowhere near as they were when he was the wave of criticism videos. Now, what is Rich up to these days? Before that, we're going to go over some of the drama and criticism he's faced over the years. There's a lot of it, and I don't want to be here all day, nor do I have the time to research 10 years of someone's online history. So we're just going to be focusing on some notable moments, and then we're going to talk about the position he's in today. Now, when Review Tech does cover consoles, aka technology, it seems to be surface level, because even when diving ankle deep into the technological aspect of it, he would be wrong in ways that I don't even know how you could be wrong. Yeah, this is one of my criticisms of Rich, is when I watched him talk about like PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X and PC shit when they were coming out, uh, a lot of times he uh, he was like vague and didn't really know what was going on, and I'm like, he should know more than me. In 2013, around the launch of the PS4 and Xbox One, it was reported that Call of Duty Ghosts would run at 1080p, 60 frames per second, on PS4, but 720p with the same frame rate on Xbox One. Review Tech, claiming to have very, very reliable sources, reported the opposite in regards to the PS4. Rich said it was going to be 720p on both consoles, and he claimed this was because the online play functionalities couldn't handle the higher resolution. This literally makes no sense because the resolution you run the game on your device has no impact to your online connection to other consoles. The actual president of Sony Interactive Entertainment Worldwide responded to this, not being asked by a journalist at a press conference, but on Twitter. Mr. Yoshida simply called what Rich said, so stupid. And then the developers of Ghost said the real reason was if they ran the game at 1080p on Xbox One, the frame rate wouldn't be at 60, so that's why they lowered it. They didn't want to compromise 60 frames per second. The game would be 1080p on PlayStation. Back in the day, there was a lot of negative stigma around creating- Damn, even the damn Sony CEO called a dumbass. That's pretty brutal. I might have a mental spiral if that happened to me, to be completely fair. You know? To be completely fair. <laughs> I don't know. Seems pretty upsetting. Not very strong, you know. Not very strong. Felt it by Mr. Sony himself. Damn. Damn. Creators trying to solicit their audience for money, as it was a new thing. Even some of the most successful creators that make a lot of money doing that, like Mr. Medicare, were once against it. Although times have changed. Money is money, and audiences are now normalized to it for the most part, and a lot of people are willing to help keep the content they enjoy consuming afloat. Rich received a lot of criticism due to asking his audience for things. At one point, he wanted a Sony camera, and asked his audience for PayPal donations for it. In response, a creator named Buster made a video where he showed he had a brand new Sony camera in his possession, and bragged about buying it himself, without needing to ask his audience for it. Even though he never mentioned Rich, it was a clear sneak this and he responded to it. This seems minor. What's the point of even mentioning this? Well, it helps set the stage and leads us into Rich's drama involving a YouTuber named Big Cheese. He was an associate of Rich and the two made a deal. Rich needed Yeah, dude, I agree with that 100%. Asking your audience like in for anything monetarily, disgusting. 100%. 100% disgusting. Unforgivable. We're uh, about a fifth of the way to Naked Snake and Super Chat goals tonight. I appreciate you guys so much for all your love. Also, my book is coming out. Make sure you back it 10 times or you're banned. But no, I completely agree. Needed a computer, so Big Cheese loaned him one of his. In exchange, Big Cheese was to get three shoutouts from Rich a week for six months on his channel and also $200. However, Rich wouldn't hold his end of the deal and decided by himself he no longer needed to pay the $200 or keep promoting Big Cheese. While negotiating with Cheese, he threatened to go to court over this dispute. Although, after Big Cheese made a video and Rich got public backlash, he admitted fault and gave Big Cheese the $200. This became a meme to mock Rich because the phrase, pay Big Cheese $200, is humorous to a lot of people. But also, he did agree to this arrangement and decided not to follow through, even though it wasn't a lot of money at all. Rich's growing number of detractors then started calling themselves the Big Cheese Crusaders, and they produced content criticizing him. The most well-known one, who we will just refer to as The Critic, produced pretty long videos with text-to-speech. The Critic garnered a couple thousand subscribers. Now, of course, Boogie. No, Boogie's so narcissistic, bro, that, that it, he could never kill himself. He loves himself too goddamn much, right? But Rich, I don't know. I don't know. You know? I just never, I've gotten that vibe from him and had somewhat successful videos criticizing Rich. Although he didn't just critique, at one point going as far as writing emails to sponsors of Rich, asking them to drop him. According to Rich himself, the critics succeeded in getting two sponsors to drop him. The existence of this channel would cause controversy and discussion, being was this just criticism, or was it also harassment? Although, the critic would eventually disappear from the internet, with the tractors of Rich claiming he paid someone to dox him to get them to stop. 
In a now deleted video, Review Tech USA promoted some sort of person or group that was supposedly dedicated to cyber criminal investigations and preventing them. A lot of people thought it was sketchy and led to backlash. Regarding the doxing allegation, Rich disputes he paid this organization to dox, claiming someone doxed a critic without being paid. People sent me information. I've never personally. I gotta be honest. Um, see this. This is kind of eye opening because if you're paying, if you've been paying attention to the whole J drama in the last year. Rich has been doing some weird shit like this, right? And the issue is, is people start to, they will say doxing is bad unless it benefits me. Then it's good because these people are bad, right? So, and I've talked about this before, but when you have a position that you consider from a moral standpoint, like, i.e., I'm a good person, you will justify doing pretty heinous shit to prevent that stance from being threatened. Now, if your stance is from a place of reason, you won't go that far, right? Because obviously your stance is from a place of reason. But when you think, oh, well, my, my stance is because I'm a good person and I care about people, so I'm going to kill you and your whole family because it's the right thing to do and it's for the greater good. Dox him. I've never paid to get him doxxed, even though he goes around saying that. Despite disputing the claim that he paid to dox, he publicly pawned releasing it on his Twitter. The critic challenged him to. Rich responded saying he would and also dox the guy's child. Rich would later try to walk this back. But I was very tempted to release it, and I got angry and tweeted on Twitter that I was going to release his personal information and release a picture of his child. Um, I didn't do it, thankfully. Even though he did publish the guy's dox on a now deleted Facebook post. Rich also claims he was not paid to promote the group. Instead, Rich paid them $30 to promote their organization. So you presented them as a sponsorship then, saying that they had sponsored yes. you, but they did not pay you money to nope. sponsor you. Nope. You gave them a token amount of money. A to $20. token would be an overstatement. It was like $30 at most. And the reason he did this was to try to scare off harassment. So what was the benefit for you out of the arrangement of working with them? They would have basically tried to keep you know, the harassment at bay. The person who ran this group allegedly ended up being a convicted criminal with dozens of separate convictions, and Rich would eventually distance himself. Herein lies the problem, right? If you immediately, if you're trying to go out of your way to stop harassment on your channel, you're fucking, you're done. Because again, you're letting it get to you. You can't let that shit get to you, man. Right? Because you already lost. That's the whole point. If a troll gets to you, you already lost. Right? And Rich, we could, you could tell that he the trolls got to him. Controversy to that from the big cheese days the decade prior. Rich decided he didn't need his editor Jay anymore and apparently fired him on his birthday. His reasoning being he no longer uploaded that many videos onto the channel, so there was no reason to keep him around. The drama comes from a pay dispute. Jay and Rich seemingly couldn't agree on what the final payment should be, and things got heated and got public, with Rich making the humanizing comments about Jay on Facebook. Rich claims prior to all this, he was paying Jay $2,500 a month to edit for him. It's a bit confusing, but for the final payment, Jay was apparently paid $3,275. Rich made it sound like Jay wanted this exact amount, citing extra work he did for Rich, being live streams. But the way Jay described this final payment, he made it like Rich was trying to be nice to him after the drama. What seems to really make this whole thing heat up was Jay publicly saying Rich left him horrible voice messages, but not leaking them, which led to Rich leaking them himself to show the audience what he said. The sympathy card that you played after we had a pay What the fuck, Rich? I remember this shit. He's like, yeah, so... Jay said he's not going to leak my shitty voicemails, so I'm going to do it myself to prove how cool I am. What? Payment dispute, which is something that happens constantly. It is it is a very normal thing. It's going to be one of the worst mistakes you've ever made in your career. Judging by the comments on these drama videos, it seems like the vast majority of the audience sided against Rich. While Rich has a dedicated amount of detractors, this drama left their little bubble. It was exposed to a much larger audience, one who doesn't know who Big Cheese is. And a lot of those people seem to side with Jay. I mean, he is the little guy after all. He was getting fired and simply wanted the payment he had been receiving. And Rich didn't want to pay until it was made public. And he seemed to be all over the place while this drama was going on. It didn't help that Rich seemingly kept flip-flopping on the issue. He was going to go on Locale Live, but then he wasn't. And he talked to Jay and they were going to do their own video together discussing the situation. And then Rich went out of his way to try to sabotage a collaboration between Jay. All right, so this is where everything starts to fucking fall apart. And this is where I noticed it, like hyper noticed it, right? Remember I said earlier, like when I saw the January 6th stream, I was like, well, he's kind of freaking the fuck out. This is where I hyper noticed it was when this shit was happening with Jay. Because every day he'd be like, oh, dude, me and Jay are like best bros. We're like the best friends ever again. We're like talking on the phone. We're so cool. And then like six hours later, Rich is like, I hope Jay's family dies in a car wreck. And I'm like, what the fuck's happening?
his Dropbox was hacked by someone in St. Thomas, Canada. They even got past the two-factor authentication. He said the hacker went through his 1099s and photos of his ex-wife's other kids. According to Rich, him and his ex-wife shared the Dropbox. And some of these photos, according to Rich, were her children in bikinis. They uh, absolutely do. They don't care. They got around two-factor authentication too. And they're going to try to make it if there's a, like, yeah, like they're teenage girls. They took pictures of themselves like in bikinis and shit. They're going to try to make it like, did it look like, like I was accessing them? By discussing what happened in his view, he was trying to get ahead of the hackers trying to make him look like a creep. Some people would speculate if there was illegal pornography in his Dropbox, but Rich denied this. Rich would say the hackers were the real creeps for going through his Dropbox. He would allege the hackers were Andy Worski and PPP from drama newsstream Kino Casino, or it was one of their fans. As the duo had been covering antics Rich was involved in consistently, Worski would mock the idea that they or their fans were hackers. When I spoke to Worski, he told me that he and PPP believe Rich was never hacked at all. Worski also denied living in St. Thomas, Canada, also saying Rich has changed details on where the hacker. When I asked Worski what the official Kino Casino position was on whether Rich was actually a pedophile or if they were just joking, he told me that they thought Rich was sus. When I asked Rich about the situation, he told me to just look at the times he's publicly addressed this and didn't comment any further on the matter. On April 7th, 2013, Rich announced his YouTube channel was now his full-time job. A very exciting thing for anyone. Children all around the world want to be a YouTuber, more than an astronaut. However, all good things don't last forever. And 11 years after the fact, Rich announced the end of his main channel. Although, he would post one more sponsored video the day after. And he didn't leave completely, he was just moving to his second channel. But not too long after that, he announced his audience would be seeing him less, as he got a new job. I don't think we're going to see him fully quit anytime soon. But for now, he's just a part-time YouTuber with a normal day job. He went from popular and successful commentator. <laughs> I don't think we're going to see him quit anytime soon deletes his channel during the pod again on X. With him mocking Jay's mental health, Jay responded and tweeted out a hotline for mental health services, adding on that he thinks Rich is suffering from mental illness. During all of this, Rich decided to embrace being a villain. Alongside announcing this, Discord leaks came out of him acting deranged, writing that he thinks his career is over. So he's decided he's going to have his demise in spectacular fashion. His words, not mine. The ship is sinking and man, I'm going to stir up everything while it's sinking. With him asking his remaining fans for any info on his detractors. If whoever has stuff on any of these assholes, by all means, post it here. On June 21st, 2024, Rich went live at the same time as both Jay in the Kino Casino. While he did secure about 800 live viewers, saying very unsavory things about Jay, the casino duo, and commentator 8-Bit Eric that I cannot repeat or play because of how out of pocket they were, Jay in the casino still made more donations than him. From my understanding, Rich later said he was going to do another stream the day after, discussing journalist Smash JT and alleging he was involved in a crime. But Rich didn't go live, and he stopped posting on X. In a Discord server, he posted an audio message about collecting dirt on Jay to send to business associates of his. You're going to look real fucking bad. That's another thing I could send to his employers now. And then, some shocking allegations about Rich came out from the Kino Casino. Keep in mind, this is all allegations from a drama news show. And now we're caught up. <laughs> now we're caught up. So here's the allegations from old Papi Papi and uh, Andy. But it's gotten a lot of traction, so I think it's worth mentioning. After talking to Jay, they alleged the Dropbox login came from Jay's computer. This was because Rich gave Jay a computer. He had previously used it, and he didn't wipe it. So his Dropbox was logged into the computer. So that would explain how somebody from Canada got past Rich's two-factor authentication. The account was just there. They also alleged Rich had a backend on this computer, so he could remote access Jay's computer without him knowing. Originally, this computer was meant to be given to DSP. The casino alleged Rich messed with Jay's YouTube channel and PayPal account, while Jay would be live streaming. The most shocking was regarding what was in the Dropbox. They said it did have actual legal pornography on the Dropbox, trying to build onto the narrative that Rich is a creep. According to Jay, uh, the computer is no longer plugged in or connected to the internet. Jay has also spoken about getting it forensically investigated for criminal activity. The next day, Jay did a stream talking more about what the casino said. He made sure to add he didn't think Rich was a pedophile. On the same day, Rich did a stream about the Kino Casino and Jay, announcing he was sober for the stream, a common criticism of him the casino gave. He played videos he had securely archived onto a USB flash drive that he showcased to try and make his critics look bad. Most notably, Rich played an exposed video of the Kino Casino by God Winston, an online personality who was once affiliated with the program. In this video, God Winston alleged the website did duo used to collect donations from the audience was unsafe. While watching this video, Rich brought up older scandals and allegations Andy Worski has faced. From what I've seen and read on the stream, Rich didn't really address the allegations against him much. Besides pointing out the fact Jay doesn't think he's a pedophile, Rich seems more focused on trying to discredit and mock his critics. On June 26, 2024, Jay announced his... This is one thing, this goes, so this is what I remember the most about everything. I remember the whole Rich being a, uh, uh, a pee diddler, but, um... Uh, Jay tweeted this out and said, my bank was 100% accessed and money was e-transferred out. There are signs that my iCloud was ex assessed, uh, which accessed, which includes all photos, videos, and notes. My IP address was shown in a video online. I've talked to the police. I'm drawing a line in the sand with this. I'm done discussing this nonsense. I have nothing to hide and I've no done nothing wrong online or offline. I'm not accusing anyone and uh, I'm not asking you to as well. I appreciate the support. Now, who could possibly have done this to Jay? 
This is why it's true last night. I was thinking I wouldn't uh, react like this tonight. Uh, but, uh, today, my man. Yeah, I was, I was, thank you. I was hoping, I didn't think I was going to. Uh, probably wouldn't have started the stream, to be honest. To me, it's a, not a very, it's a strange thing to do. I'm not looking for, I'm not looking for anything. Like, I'm, I'm fine. And my videos are getting viewership again. My streams, people show up to them. Like, that's not what I'm looking for. I don't, I'm not looking for sympathy of any kind. Yeah, this is real shit, man. This is real shit. You know, this isn't a Monday Matt thing. Well, the news is out, ladies and gentlemen. Dickers himself has deleted his YouTube channel. This tweet came out right before he deleted his Twitter account as well. So he took down his Twitter account the other day when he had his eight-hour live stream meltdown, came back, and was joking about suicide for some reason. People were actually flaming him. If you go to his personal Facebook or if you go to his Instagram or even Twitter, he's getting burnt to a crisp over joking about suicide or something. I, I don't know. I covered it on my stream, but that's besides the point. You can see right here, he tweeted out Review Tech USA 2009 to 2024. Thank you for the years of support. I'll still be live streaming on our RTU streams. And uh, apparently he deleted his, his channel, which he was saying earlier this last week that he was thinking about doing it to me. It's a cry for attention. We know by the end of this next week, he's going to reactivate his YouTube channel. He'll be back on. He can't. See, here's the issue, though. According to Google, you can't reactivate a YouTube channel. Anyways. Stay away from the Internet. Every time he says he's going to delete Twitter, he comes back on. Every time he says he's going to take a break, he comes back in less than a day or two. Remember when he did the goodbye video and then literally like less than a day later, he made a video about Keffels that had like a, a sponsorship on it? This dude's clown shoes. And and apparently he brought his Twitter back a third time within the span of two days to put that he was no longer going to be using his main channel. Now, just the other day. Yeah, Art, that's exactly what I said earlier. I said if you have someone within YouTube that they could they could do it. I mean, YouTube can do whatever they want. I've seen YouTube rescue channels of people that became hyper famous somewhere else and they had an old YouTube channel and YouTube reinstated it just for the person. But also... They're not going to do that for Rich, probably. You know what I'm saying? They're probably not going to do that for Rich. They wouldn't. They You would have to be Mr. Beast or, you know, you would have to be moist critical for them to even respond to an email, likely, in my opinion. Hey, he went nuts. He went nuts against JKB, myself, Teamstar, Boogie, Wings, uh, <laughs> fucking you name it. This guy went ape shit over everybody on the internet that has ever criticized him, and, and he's losing it. And we're not saying you uh you are a bad human being we're just saying take some time off the internet take a mental health break all right spend time with your family me telling you go see your kids doesn't mean that you don't take care of your kids all right all that bullshit aside i've been avoiding you i haven't been watching your content i haven't been reacting to your content i haven't made anything about you but since you tried to uh i guess bury me on your eight hour live stream the other day the meltdown live stream i'm like you know what it's fair game again. It's fair game, Dickers. All right. And I'm going to relish in this. So, yeah, apparently he did this. And people are saying this might be the dumbest decision you've ever made. But these days it's a hard choice. Like fucking Augie out of anybody. Augie just came back to YouTube and, and is calling him out uh, like completely like right off the top. Uh, Rich is worse than a woman. He kind of reacts uh, like a woman. He reacts off of emotion. He's got Well, look, dude, in here, I'm just this is, all, this is all I'll really say. This is kind of unrelated, but. You know, you ever heard like the phrase you're being hormonal? Here's the issue is when you get older, um, your testosterone naturally decreases as a man. That can have really devastating consequences to your psyche until you adjust to it, right? No, it's funny. You can see uh, the other day, Boogie fucking spanked attacking him. Me, attacking Keem, attacking Jordy, attacking 8-Bit Eric, attacking everybody. And it turns out it's because he's a bad dad. And people are seeing that. So I went to his chat to talk to him thinking, you know, maybe instead of attacking us, maybe he would like to talk about the fact that he showed the world what a bad daddy was, right? So they're talking about that clip where somebody comes in saying, hey, she's crying, put her to bed. Why don't you just own up to it and say, hey, I made a mistake. I was streaming. I should have took a break. I should have got up. Take care of it. He doubled down. How can you be felted by uh, Boogie, though? 
by the way, Art, thank you for explaining Felted to me like eight times. Down and and that's the problem with him is that he's held zero accountability for anything. He's never apologized for his actions. Uh, if you go to the, the 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 live stream that I did about his meltdown, I showed the DMs where he attacked me, saying that I was showing private stuff on his Facebook. This dude has just been obsessed, and it, and you hate to see it. It's it's fucking sad to see this guy has been felting himself over and over. And and you know what? Maybe it's a good thing that he deleted his YouTube account, but he's still not going to take YouTube breaks. He's still going to live stream because he's addicted to it. It's it's almost like he has a humiliation kink. Like, now that he's getting shamed, now that Boogie's even punked him out, which we didn't watch the whole thing, but Uncommon Boogie W. Like, you could go and watch the rest of this clip. We're going to move forward really quickly because this came out of nowhere. Um, so I basically said, hey, you know, Review Tech USA, I'm making the content I do because I'm making my audience entertained. You can't even do that. All you have to offer your audience is sitting there watching DSP videos. That's all you have. Sitting there burp. Yeah, so that was the thing that was, the thing that was weird. Um is a year ago, I would I started noticing that like Rich would be streaming, and it's sh he's just quietly sitting there and like watching DSP stream. <laughs> and I'm like, what is he doing? <laughs> is this the show? What the fuck is going on? Um, that's what I noticed. Um, Does not exist. Nope, it's gone. So between me, Kino Casino, Local Live. I mean, this man could not handle it. This is a guy who who built his fucking platform, criticizing people, talking about people, um, and he couldn't handle it when it got on him. He did his channel. What I saw on his Instagram is on his Instagram is a sickening display of how you talk to your fans. Somebody reached out in response to his video where he mocked suicide. He was laughing about the rumor that he killed himself. And then in the comments, somebody asked him, why are you doing this? I lost a friend to suicide. You're going you're gonna to see this, the disgusting comment that Review Tech USA left him. And, and if you support him still after this, you're just as disgusting and pathetic as him. I'm, I'm fucking, I'm livid right now. On Review Tech USA's Instagram account, he responded to a fan in a very tasteless, disgusting manner. So you can see right here, Get Fit with Jared says, dude, what the fuck? I lost an online friend this way. What kind of psychopath jokes about suicide like this? Here's his reply. You can see right here, the real RTU YouTube one says, so have I. Life is dark. Grow a set. Yeah, he's going through some shit, man. <laughs> Review Tech USA took to Twitter to write, I think by the end of the month, I'll be deleting my Review Tech USA YouTube channel. I'm not 100% on this yet, but I truly think it's time. It's a relic from a different era, and it's time to completely close the door on that chapter of my life. I will let you know where live stream clips go next month, as those will still happen. Smash JT responds to Rich by saying, I know you hate me these days, but I just wanted to say, when you covered game news and gave your takes on it, it was peak. I don't think doing this is the best move, but hey, you do you, man. I wish you well in wherever life takes you. Nev responds to Smash JT writing, Rich made a lot of people happy and entertained people through tough times over the years on here. He should be proud of his work. People can still enjoy the old times. It would be unfortunate if he deleted his channel. Whether he likes it or not, he is part of YouTube gaming history. Nintendo Prime responds to Rich saying, My personal opinion, setting aside any BS, is that this is a mistake. You can reshape the channel into anything you want it to be. It's called a channel reinvention. It won't be the same as the old content out the gate, but you will have a starter community. I did this with my channel seven years ago. And 100%. That's 100% that's correct. Dude, let, let me keep it real with you. Let, let, I'm going to let you in on a secret. You want to know how much that, oh yeah, good point. You want to know how much that channel made the past 30 days with clips going up? 600 bucks. That, that passive income. <laughs> Yeah, see, this is uh, this is this is just not it, man. You know what I'm saying? This is just not it. Most people would dream of making 600 bucks on YouTube, and to be fair, he's not really putting any work into it. You know, here's that's the issue. Like, no one can relate to you, and I'm not saying you should manipulate in people just trying to make them relate to you. I'm just saying no one can relate to that. I'm getting rid of my channel, okay? Because it only made 600 bucks, and that's that's bullshit. It's just not, that's bullshit money. And I'm just going to just delete all of it and just be done. Like like a dude said, Eslo said, that's just, that's like a little kid, little kid reaction. Guys. <laughs> Welcome to the stream. <laughs> I used to get millions of views a month. You guys would shower me with admiration.
an affirmation. And then I stopped putting work in. I'm sorry. And when I stopped putting work in, like, you guys stopped watching. I just can't go on. You don't know how hard it is to not get views when you don't put up content in the first fucking place. And all you do is rely on within the ashes. She doesn't give a fucky. No one cares about my YouTube channel. So I'm just going to delete it. And then you'll be sorry. <laughs> you'll think, wow. I miss that guy making videos about nothing. And you'll be sorry because I won't be here anymore. That's what you want, isn't it? $600? That only buys like six McDoubles now. And I need seven because I have to make my calorie intake to keep up the 390 pounds. Ah, yeah, I'm getting a little too personal. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm just fucking around, okay? <laughs>